Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle. Thought I'd take this morning while we're prepping for steel to show you guys some of the tips and tricks we've learned along the way to ensure that your steel runs well and consistent when it comes to the layout and how you ensure that you don't have ribs around your windows which can possibly cause leaks or you don't want a corner trim dying right where a rib is. So we'll take you through some of those tips and tricks. Let's get into it. So as with most projects, a lot of your success is gonna begin at the ground. And in this case, it's our base trim. So when installing our base trim, we prefer to make sure that we've got a laser set up. You can see the laser right there in the middle of the building. And we're using the receiver to ensure that it is gonna be perfectly level everywhere we put a nail. And that's gonna also allow us to make sure that everything that's laid out from here on out is based off this base trim and gonna be perfectly level. One of the things we also like to do is notch our base trim. So you're gonna get a little bit of freebie tips on this video, not just all about layout, but also some tips and tricks. So once we hear that solid tone, we're good to go. Now that the base trim is done, we've got a point of reference for everything from here on out. Using that laser, we know that the top of our base trim is our grade mark of zero. So what that's gonna do is that'll allow us to set all of our other trims and measure off for windows and doors. First, what we gotta do before we get into any other stuff is we gotta install our house wrap. And I'm gonna take a couple seconds to talk about the importance of house wrap, I think, on a post frame. Now, there's always a lot of confusion around my videos for a couple reasons in talking about house wrap. We don't use the house wrap for a moisture barrier. Typical post frame structures are gonna get steel put up right against the frame and that is it. But we're not just typically building a typical post frame. So this is gonna eventually be a heated shop. Now, I don't know how they're gonna insulate the walls, but they might spray foam them, they might fiberglass bat them, I don't know. We're not contracted for that on this project. We're just gonna be doing the exterior. We're gonna be putting a ceiling in it and that is gonna get blown in insulation. So house wrap is important for a couple of reasons. One, it stops the air. It does do some moisture control, so that is a nice benefit, but that's not why we use it. If you are going to potentially do a spray foam in your building, you gotta have a barrier between your steel and that foam because you do not wanna have to remove steel down the road. Foam will adhere to it like glue, it won't come off very easily and you can run the risk of having expansion contraction issues when the sun heats up your metal if it was installed during colder temperatures and you could get some really nasty oil cans. So enough about that. We use Block It House Wrap because it's very stretchy. It just runs really nice. I've got my custom logo on it, which is a big deal to me. I like to see that branding on our buildings. If you're interested in getting your own custom branded house wrap, you just gotta buy a full pallet of house wrap from them and they will do it for anybody. So uh, there's really no extra charge. You just gotta buy the whole pallet. Now when running our house wrap, since we don't have any plywood sheeting or OSB or anything on the wall, we can't just run a full you know, roll of house wrap. We have to kind of end it on a wall girt. House wrapping in a post frame is a little bit difficult if you have any winds. Luckily for us today, it's pretty much perfect out. So uh, we've already got our dimension, which was eight foot four, yep. not 104. That was my fault. Um, and it's nice for us. We found that if we just take a sawzall, we got a nice Diablo pruning blade. Uh, you don't want to go cut through it too fast. You want to take it nice and easy which is why I like the uh, pruning blade because it doesn't have a ton of teeth and we're just looking to just kind of saw our way through. Otherwise, what'll happen is you'll heat the product, it'll almost glue itself together and then when you're unwinding it, it becomes a huge pain. Come on, Greg. <laughs> That was a good cut. There's no burn, which means it should unravel just about perfect. Good holding, Greg. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, here's another thing that you must, must pay attention to, uh, especially when house wrapping. 
make sure you run your house wrap the right way. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing somebody run their house wrap upside, upside down. down. Oh my God, like take a little bit of pride in what you're doing, guys. <laughs> Hope I didn't offend anybody with that, but. Yep, okay, let's go ahead and get it stretched up. You like the look? Like the look. I like it. Okay, I find that the biggest loss of heat or inefficiencies in a post frame, typical post frame, is because they don't use a house wrap and the wind just blows right through it. We're out here in the middle of, you know, flat ground where we get winds in excess of 60 mile an hour uh, multiple times a year, which also I wanna point out, these buildings are engineered from anywhere from 90 to 110 mile per hour wind ratings. Just a little side information. So now when you talk about layout on a building that has rib panels where you don't want ribs to line up with your trims, where you're gonna potentially have water be making its way behind that steel panel, layout is key not only for where any penetration in the wall is, such as a door or window, but also where these corner trims are gonna lie at the end of the job. Now, some of these things might not make sense exactly, but if you do any sort of post frame or metal roofing or really any um, trade that involves metal panels, layout is key. And if you don't know why, keep watching the video and hopefully it'll start to make sense to you. This building is 120 foot long. So 120 feet is perfectly divisible by three feet. Now our panel coverage on each sheet is three foot. Therefore we know that we're gonna have an exact amount of sheets with no cutting on this wall. We will also know that our first rib is gonna be exactly on the end here, and if we did our job right, exactly on the other end. Now, this is where layout is important. You have to make sure that you mark and lay out where every sheet is gonna go so that you end exactly where you want to. We've learned that you have to lay it out, otherwise you're at the will of whatever the roll former produces, and that's not what you want. You wanna force your pants Panels to be to the specified layout and coverage that they're meant to be. You can see here I've got a doorway, so I'm not able to mark my first sheet, but I'm gonna come through to the next sheet. We've got a three foot panel, therefore the center of this rib on this panel, and this will all make sense as we start to actually lay it out, is at six foot. But I also have a siphon rib that is going to be past that center, which is one inch. So from six foot one, that is going to be the edge of this sheet that's gonna go into the doorway. But what I like to do is I'm gonna set a nail right on that six foot one mark so that I can use that to then pull out the rest of this wall. So the thing to note at this point, once I hook onto that six foot one mark, or sometimes it's three foot one or whatever, I'm only gonna mark three foot inter intervals. So three foot, six foot, nine foot, 12 foot, and I think you guys get the picture. So I'll just run out my tape length here that I've got. I've only got a 25 footer. Now the other thing that we like to do, and it may be overkill, but I think it does make it easier in the long run, is take a level and level up your marks from the top to the bottom. That way when you put your first sheet of steel in, it can be consistently hitting where you wanna be top and bottom. Now you don't have to do every one. I usually do every other one. If you're really wanting to double check and make sure because you have issues in the past, do every one. It doesn't take that long. So I'm gonna do that throughout this whole building and then we'll get to actually installing the metal. We were talking about coverage on the steel panel. What I mean by that is that if we take our tape measure and go from the center of our good rib, which is the rib that laps over this rib on my left side or your right, which is the siphon, you should have a 36 inch coverage center to center. Now, when we were laying out our steel on the wall, remember I went six foot one instead of six foot. That is because we've got this guy here, which is what we call our siphon leg, which is usually an inch past the center of the rib. Now, if I take a panel here, and you'll notice that we've got it all pre-punched, um, that definitely aids in your layout, making sure things are perfect. You'll see that if I go ahead and put this piece right on the edge of where my mark was, that is, that is what's going to keep my consistent layout. 
Now you'll notice just setting it on this base trim, which we shot with a laser, it's not perfect. I'm about maybe an eighth away from my line. You always put the material where you want it. Don't worry about the push in the pole. If you lay it out properly and everything is level, there can be a little bit of scrunch or expansion in the panel with the ribs, depending on the tensile strength and how it goes through the roller. Now with this door opening here, we're not gonna do anything for now. We're just gonna go ahead and pack this just so it doesn't go anywhere. And when we come and install this door and trim it out, I'll show you guys why that makes sense and what's important about the layout for doors and windows. Having the screw holes already punched, takes all the guesswork out of trying to be straight and consistent, and you're always gonna be right where you want it, and it's gonna take a lot less effort to install it. Now that we're putting the panel on, you can see here what I was talking about. This is what we call our good rib. There's no leg on it, it's just, you know, goes right around, and then our siphon leg is right here. So you see this, the way this is a lot deeper. Now, if you're looking at it from the top, any wind-driven rain that were to by chance get through here, it's gonna stop and not be able to siphon any further because of this gap that is right there. So that's the anti-siphon leg. And I've done this enough that I kind of know the push and pull and the feel of your steel and how you want it to go. So we've all got, we've all kind of got our methods of doing it. Um, how you like to install the steel. Personally for me, I like to go ahead and tack the leading edge right on my mark, like so. I like to come up here to this level line, make sure I'm right where I want it. Then I come over here and make sure I got a nice lap. And then I'll just kind of keep going and we'll run out all of this Wayne's coat in the exact same fashion. So now we're on to the end wall and we've already got our wings coat. Everything's been laid out. What I wanted to do is take a second and tell you guys how we um, figure out how to cut that angle way up there and what the dimension is uh, for all these sheets. Cause we're only going to measure once and we will use that measurement for the rest of the sheets. So check it out. First thing that I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to double check, even though I already know where my girt lines are for my punch rows. Now, when we laid this building out on our story poles, we made sure they were 32 inch spaces. So I'm gonna do a 32 inch space on my steel for my punch hole locations, all the way up to the bottom cord of that truss. And I'll need to get that dimension, which will require an extra hand. So I'll get Greg in here in a, a minute. So Greg, whenever you're ready. One second. You had to back all the way up to the corner, Greg. Um, you, go, you want you need to get that measurement first and then you want to get this measurement or what is the plan? I want you to help me get my corner measurement for my cut and then we'll get uh, the, I just need the bottom cord in that first row up. Right. I guess I could try. Can I get it? I got it up in there, Greg. So what we've got is a uh, we've got a 16 foot height measurement. So I'm always going to take the tight measurement, but when we actually make our steel cut, I'll uh, take a quarter inch off of that. So the awesome thing about a engineered building like what we have, where we have a 412 end truss, the pitch on it is 412. As long as our trim that the steel is setting on is level, our building is plumb 
uh, and everything is like it should, then it's so easy once you have the first sheet installed to just use that same dimension because I order my sheets one foot increments so every sheet gets one foot longer because a 412 pitch on three foot of run is one foot so that means I can use the same dimension on every sheet to start the angle of my pitch Also, since I know people are going to ask, why don't you house wrap the gable of your building? Well, because this is going to be a heated, insulated building with a ceiling. Therefore, those trusses uh, up there are just going to be empty dead space in the attic. And I'm not really concerned with air infiltration through the metal. Uh, I'm not stopping it on the roof. Therefore, why should I worry about stopping it on the end? So we're going to draw air through the eave soffits we've got a solid soffit on the gable and it's going to go out of our ridge vent up at the ridge so really for us it's just kind of a cost analysis time labor material i don't think it's really worth it remember we're using the house wrap strictly as a air barrier we just want to prevent air from blowing through our uh, condition space which is not up there in the trusses and if you're curious i'll try to tag a video that i did talking to matt risinger who is He's a fellow YouTuber. I met him, talked with him, good friend, and he's a building scientist. So um, I take his word. He's done a lot of research, and he told me that the way we're doing it is perfectly acceptable, compared it to a Yeti cooler. So if you want to check that out, go take a look in the link above there or down in the description. So right here is the first location where layout makes a huge difference. You can see right where that door trim is hitting the panel you'll notice that we're in the flat of the panel we're not next to a rib so where that water is going to go out over the panel it's in the flat and i'll show you exactly what that looks like now you can see why it's important to make the correct layout because if this rib was over here right where that was terminating i would not be able to push the water out over the panel you can see i'm tucked up over the steel so the side steel goes up in there so any water coming down the wall is going to go out over top of the J channel if you don't lay out the building properly and you get a rib right here all that water would be forced to go right into the rib and is going to get behind your steel and cause problems down the road so here's one of the key locations that are important to take note of and that is garage door opening As far as windows and doors are concerned, what I always like to do and what I've done here is I already know my layout. I already know that there's gonna be a rib every nine inches off the corner because I've got that perfect divisible 120 foot on this wall. So what that means is I can lay out exactly where my ribs are gonna go. And I've done that with these lines here on this window header. First off, I already know because we've done this a million times, our windows are four foot wide. And because of that dimension, it works really good if we make sure a window is dead center on a rib. So center of rib, center of window. So that's how I like to lay them out, but I can shift it over and go in the center of a flat and still work out. But you'll see here, I've got a rib location and a rib location. If I move it too far this way to get in the center of this flat, this side is gonna get too close to the center of that rib and vice versa if I go the other way. So make sure you check the dimensions of your windows and lay it out accordingly so that it does not fall right on a rib here on the window. Now, I can't show you guys exactly on this project what to do 
when there is a rib that's right there because it does happen once in a while and I will make sure that I share it when it happens the next time. So make sure if you haven't, you hit that subscribe button or turn on that bell notification so you don't miss any future videos if that's something that you would love to learn in the future. So I will definitely do that, thank you. But that's how we lay out the windows, it's very simple. Know where your ribs are gonna be, make sure you put the window so that your sides do not hit those ribs. And I will show you once the window's installed why that's so important. All right, so now that we have this walk door installed, the steel around it, it's very evident why layout is key with walk doors because you don't want this top trim dying in a rib. So this is loose right now so that I could show you, you see how the steel will go up underneath the trim. Any water that comes down this wall is gonna hit this trim and is gonna be forced out over the edge and it's gonna come down the side steel. If this rib was not laid out properly or your doorway and that rib was at the end of your trim on either side, you would be forcing water right behind your building or you'd have to rely on caulk alone. And I always try to say, do your best, then caulk the rest. A mechanical flash is always better than a caulk flashing. So don't rely on caulk. So I'm gonna assume you can see here with a window why layout is important. Remember we hit the rib right on the center of our window. Got some caulk there. And what that allowed us to do was to have our overcut still stay in the flat. And we got this rib here, which is nice when we do shutters. It gives us something to put our shutters against. But for now, you can see this little bit of steel is up above the top of the window. And that'll be key when we go to put our trim on, which I'll show you in a little bit. But this is so important to be in the flat when you end your cut across the top of a window. That is how you stay leak free. So now that we have two pieces of steel up around this window, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of J and I'm gonna kind of feed it up. Starting on one side, I'm just gonna kind of work it as I go. So now once the window's installed, you can definitely see the layout mattered. It put us perfectly in between these ribs as best we could. Um, Cause if we were to shift either way, it would get just a little bit too close for comfort to that rib. But the way it stands now, water will come out and go over just like it did on the walk door. So I don't really know if there's a whole lot more I can tell you about layout other than the fact that clearly it does matter. And if ever you're gonna work with steel panels or really any building at all, no the process, know where your end result is wanting to be, and then make sure you lay things out properly to get to that point. Even though we spent time laying out the metal, it really goes back all the way to the beginning of the build when we started the layout at the foundation, making sure things were square. And then when we started building our structure, making sure it was plumb and everything was accurate because if those things aren't correct, then when it gets to the point where you're putting your finishes on, it doesn't matter how much you lay out, it is difficult if you haven't done all of the steps up until that point correctly. So I just wanna stress that layout's important. A lot of you have asked me how we make sure we don't hit ribs on the windows, how we lay out so we don't have ribs on the corner trims. And I think I touched all of those. So if you've got any questions still, drop them down below in the comments and I'll hit these points on future build series. But until then guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you, you learned something because in the end that's what this is all about. I live this day every day so uh, I don't need to relive it again but I do it for you guys so if you are enjoying it it does mean a lot if you hit the subscribe button and if you are subscribed hit the bell and get notified every time we drop a future video but for now it's getting dark uh, and I got a lot to do to wrap up before I go home and clean up so we'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks a lot.